by now you probably have heard of um, the the approval that President Muhammad Buhari has given for um, the the Kanu Dawra rail line, and you know it's um, it's it's just I don't know how to put it. It's because I need to be sensitive about this. Now you need to realize that former President Jonathan built the Abuja Kaduna rail line. 187 kilometers, uh, it cost about 1.5 billion dollars and he built this uh, rail line so that you could walk in Abuja and live in Kaduna. Now in the whole of Nigeria that's probably one of the most expensive infrastructure ever built. Former President Jonathan built this. Former President Jonathan did not build a rail line from Wari to Portakot or from Portakot to Bayelsa, where he's from. Because when you are president of a country, you can't think about your place. You are president, president of the country. You are not a an job president. You are not a Fulani president. You are not a Hausa president. You are president of the whole country. Now, you are watching me now. Let me ask you a question. What argument can you make for the economic necessity of a Kanu to Dara rail line? What argument can you make? Look, if you're from Dara or from Kanu, look, don't think that I do not like you. No, what I'm, I'm, I'm speaking objectively. I'm speaking objectively. My family, if you know my family's history, you know how much we owe the North. I'm, the, I'm speaking as a nationalist. I'm speaking as a nationalist. This is, you know, this, this is the reason why people are agitating for restructuring. President Muhammad Bari is going to push people to the wall with his policies and with his actions. Can you just imagine? Look, Nigeria... What in Nigeria, what is the economic significance of Daura to Nigeria's GDP, to Nigeria's economy? Two cities in Nigeria, Wari and Ponakot, are so significant to Nigeria's economy because about uh, between the two of them, almost 70% of Nigeria's oil production comes from those two regions. By the time you now talk about Akwaibom, you're talking about 100%. Now, do you know that there isn't a rail line connecting Wari to Ponakot? There isn't a rail line connecting Akwaibom, Eket, to Potakot. And these are economically significant, economically viable, economically productive centers. Now, what is the overwhelming need, the overwhelming necessity for you as president in these lean times, in this time where we have a recession to approve a rail line from Kanu to Daura? Daura, and that is where you are from. You are from Dara. Is it that that you are you are ruling only Dara? Are you president for Dara people because you are from Dara? Now you think about it. Look, even your own minister of finance, Kemi Adeoshi, she said fifty-five percent of Nigeria's VAT value-added tax comes from Lagos. Forty percent of Nigeria's GDP is from Lagos. Lagos is actually the seventh largest economy in Africa. If Lagos were a country, it would be the seventh largest economy in Africa. As I speak to you right now, there is no rail line, there is no direct rail line between Lagos and Ibadan, or between Lagos and Ogun. Are you aware that after Lagos, the next biggest economic cluster in the whole of Nigeria is Ogun State? There is no rail line between Lagos to Ogun, between Lagos to Ibadan. What I'm telling you now, what is what is the the necessity, the the needs, the what what is that economic necessity for a rail line between Kanu and Daura? What is it? I see this is the, the, these are the things that we see. These are the injustices that we see in in this country that makes it difficult to be. You know, we want to be patriotic. We want to love this country. People, I, I mean, so people went to my Facebook page and they were saying, why didn't Jonathan build a, a, rail, fry, a rail line from uh, uh, Potako to Otoke? Because Jonathan was a Nigerian president. He wasn't an Ijo president. He wasn't an Otoke president. I worked with him. How many of his aides were Ijo? He surrounded himself with northerners. Ambassador Hassan Tuko, come and testify. You were there. His chief political advisor. Northerner. His national security advisor, Northerner, his son and his son, and they worked with him well. They did not betray him. They worked with him well. How can we build a country like this? What economic argument can you make for this Kanu to Daura line? What? Okay, this is the Northwest. Jonathan already built the Abuja Kaduna rail line at a cost of $1.5 billion in the Northwest. Now you are building this one again also in the Northwest. What is it? Is there, are you president of the Northwest? Are you president of Daura? What, what, 
what is it? Even Delta State, where you have the major, one of the major centers of oil, without oil, Nigeria cannot survive. Delta State, the federal government has not built even an airport for them. In case you are wondering, when you are flying to Asaba and you are landing there, that airport was built by the Delta State government with their money. Look at that. When Jonathan was there, what was Jonathan? Which university did Jonathan now build, in, uh, 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 build all over? He built universities in mostly in the north. He built uh, altogether, Jonathan built about 14 universities. Of those 14 universities that Jonathan built, nine of them, sorry, 10 of them were in the north. 10 of them were in the north. You can't be a look, Obasanjo, probably the most patriotic Nigerian leader. I know some of you don't like Obasanjo, some of you might say nasty things about him, but the man is a genuine patriot. He fought my boss, but even where, anywhere I go, I will always swear to it. I can put my hand on the Bible if I'm at court and swear that that man is a genuine patriot. Obasanjo did not build the road to Ota. He didn't build the road to Ota. Go and find out if the other people were insulting him. And the man said, look, I am not an altar president. I'm not a Yoruba president. I'm a president. You need to spread. Look, that's why people, why, look, even though I don't support IPOB, even though I, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm, I'm one of their sympathizers, but I can understand why these people are saying, okay, they want to leave Nigeria. You're taking resources from people who are productive, and then you are going to go and build a high-value infrastructural projects where you are from. Because you are from Dara, you want to go and build. What is it going to, how is it going to develop Nigeria's economy? How? What does, I mean, you think about it. It's not, I'm not against you from, if you are from Dara. Look, ask yourself if you are from Dara. The British, they colonized Nigeria. Are you aware that when the British were building railways, the British, they built railways to link commercial centers to the ports so that they could develop an export-oriented economy so that Nigeria could progress. There was tin in, in Joss, so they built railway to, in, in, uh, to Joss. There was granite pyramids in Kanu, so they built railway to Kanu. There were uh, uh, um, um, a lot of uh, agricultural clusters in the Middle Belt. They built railways there. You don't just wake up and build a railway because, oh, I'm from this village or I'm from this town. That's not how you do it. There must be an economic necessity. There must be, it must be viable. If the country is so rich and then you have built up your economic necessity and you have, you have built your infrastructure to meet the economic zones, then after that you can start doing other you know, projects like, okay, well now we have enough money, we can do that. That's how England was built up. You can't be building a rail line from Kanu to Dara when you don't have rail line from Wari to Potakot, from Akwaibom to Potakot. These are areas where Nigeria makes her money from. You can't be building rail lines from Kanu to Dara when Lagos to Ibadan, Lagos to, uh, to Ogun, they don't have rail line. And Lagos is the number one economic center of Nigeria. Ogun is the number two economic center of, of, of Nigeria. Both of them, in terms of the economy, they produce more, they, are, they have more effect on the Nigeria's economy on Nigeria's economy and on, on, on Nigeria's GDP than Daura. What kind of thing is this? And this is the problem with this man. So sectional. I mean, you, you, the kinds of things that you do, look at the people surrounding him. Look at the people surrounding him. Bornu State. Your chief of staff is from Bornu State. Your economic uh, chairman of the Economic, Finan uh, economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Bornu State. Your national security advisor, Bornu State. Your chief of army staff, Bornu State. Then you go to Dara, look at all the people from Dara that you have put there, the head of the DSS, Dara. I mean, look at that, you just surround yourself and then you are so clannish and then you are saying that, that look at people that are saying, okay, we want restructuring in the country. Instead it's of it to listen to us, you are saying we should go to the National Assembly, you are saying that, that we should go to um, uh, uh, um, the National Council of State. Who is in the National Council of State? People that don't want uh, restructuring. Who is in the National Assembly? People that are afraid of restructuring because they feel that if they restructure, they will not get these large allowances, these large salaries, this constitutional uh, constituency project that they are getting. And you are saying that we should go there. That is why it is very difficult to build Nigeria when you have such a leader like this. It is painful to see a country that can be potentially be the leader of Africa, Africa, that can give pride to the black race all around the world, that can make black people proud all over. We have a president who is coming to tell us through his aides that rats ate his office, rodents ate his, uh, 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 damaged the, the things in his office. Look, South African papers are laughing at us. Chinese, go to China, Xinhua News, they are laughing at us. England, The Telegraph, they are laughing at us. BBC, CNN, they are laughing at us. Okay, we are managing this only to come and hear that this man now wants to build a railway from Kanu to Dara, where he is from. What is in Dara that you now want to build a rail line there that will now add to Nigeria's economy overwhelmingly? What is there? 
If you say you want to even build one from Kanu to Kaduna, it is understandable. Kanu in the whole of the north is the number one economic center. Then Kaduna is the second economic center. It is a textile cluster. Okay, we can understand that. You said no, it is Kanu to Daura. How come? How come? This is what we are talking about. Not that we do not like this man. What we are saying is that this man does not have the capacity to lead a heterogeneous country like Nigeria. That is why Malam Nasir El Rufai, when he was not with Buhari, he warned us in 2010, go and Google it. He said that Buhari does not have what it takes to rule a heterogeneous country like Nigeria. Google it and see what Malam Nasir El Rufai. Now he's talking a new story because he wants to, he wants to um, uh, uh, succeed Buhari. But go and read what he said before. Look, look, this is we love this country. We are praying for this country, but we cannot go on like this. Well, we have these kinds of policies that are that where you 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 it, it, it's more important to you where you're coming from than the nation than, than the than the nation at stake. We can't be like we can't go on like this. Oh, Pastor did not do it. But you good luck, Jonathan did not do it. You are there saying, okay, why didn't Jonathan do for Jonathan did not in Otu? Okay, they do not have light. They don't have electric, they don't have power, they don't have NEPA there, PSN, they don't have it. Would it, what, what, it would have been so easy for Jonathan to just, hey, I command you, go and do it there, go and do it there. But he was not a, an Ijo president, he was not an Otoko president. Can you say the same, of, can you say the same of President Buhari today? I leave you with your conscience to judge. God bless you.